Kia ora. Let's use the IR and the NMR together to work out what functional groups are present and absent. So we've got 10 examples. Here's the first one. And if you have a look, you've got an alkyl group because it's in the IR as well as in the NMR. We've got some upfield peaks over here. And the up, up, most upfield peak is always the methyl. We don't have an alkene because it's all missing here in the NMR. And we don't have a sharp narrow peak there um, or over here by 3,100 centimeters to the minus one. We're also missing all the carbonyl peaks that we would expect in the NMR for any of these, the ester, the acyl chloride, the carboxylic acid, and the amide. But we do see a peak over here, which is a strong finger-like carbonyl peak. So we know it must be either an aldehyde or ketone. So to differentiate, we look to see whether there's that W over here at about 2,800 centimeters to the minus one, and it's just nothing's there, so we know it's a ketone. And because we don't have any things in the, func in the fingerprint area for CO bonds, we know it's probably not um, an ester, and also we know it's not an ester because it's not in the correct area over here. And those peaks would therefore be carbons on either side of the carbonyl, which is what you would expect from over here, between 20 and 40, which is what you would expect. And there's your compound. So second example, if you have a look, you can see these alkyl groups. There aren't any alkenes. They're missing from both. Um, we don't have any alcohols or carboxylic acids or amines or amides because there's nothing over there. So even though we've got that peak there, we know it's not from an alcohol. Um, we do have this finger-like peak here and we do have uh, a CO or a carbon bonded to an oxygen peak, but we know it's not an aldehyde or ketone because there's no peaks very downfield. And we know it's not an acyl chloride or an amide because this peak is just over 1700, so it's too low for a, a um, acyl chloride and it's too high for an amide. We also know it's not a carboxylic acid because we don't see that broad triangular peak. Um, so these two peaks must be carbon that's attached to a carbonyl or a carbon attached to the oxygen. And there we've got our ester. Number three, hopefully you can see that broad triangular car um, carboxylic acid peak, but going through it systematically, we've got alkyls, we don't have alkenes, we do have a carboxylic acid peak, which would be over here matched by that. We know it's not an acyl chloride or an amide because of the position of this um, strong finger-like peak in the IR, and we know it's not an aldehyde or ketone because there are no peaks here in the NMR. And so we can work out it's a carboxylic acid. Fourth example, if you have a look, alkyls, not an alkene, although you could perhaps think there's something over here from that peak, but we know from the NMR there's nothing there. Um, we do see a two-pronged um, NH2 peak from the symmetric and asymmetric stretches, which could be from this over here, or it may not be. If we have a look at this peak, though, it is below 1700. So this peak is not a carbon bonded to a nitrogen, but we'll know we have an amide. So just always look at the position of that so you can say what this one is. We know it's not an aldehyde or ketone. And so there is our molecule. Notice we've got three peaks. Um, even though we've got one, two, three, four, five carbon atoms, because three are all in the same environment. Fifth example, alkyl groups. We do have an alkene, as you can clearly see in NMR and IR. We have an OH in the molecule as well. We don't have any C double bond O anywhere because all those peaks are missing. We know from the NMR we've got a terminal alkene and the other carbon of the double bond may be either bonded to an H or an both alkyl groups. This is the carbon bonded to the oxygen. So we know that the oxygen is not bonded directly to a carbon of the double bond. 
because it's got its own separate peak. And there's the molecule. Sixth example, hopefully you can see the alkyl and you can see the missing alkene in both. And you can see that this is a secondary amide peak because there's only one type of stretch. There's no carbonyls in both the IR and the NMR. So we can cross out all those functional groups that have a C double bond O in it. And we know that these peaks are down, quite downfield, so it's probably two carbons on either side of a nitrogen, which supports a secondary amide. So these are secondary amide with carbon, this peak corresponding to that carbon, and this carbon over here giving this peak. Seventh example, we can see it's got a primary NH2, and it must be an amine because we don't really have a carbonyl uh, and we certainly don't have an alkene. This one you could think, well, is it? But we know there's nothing here in NMR and we know it's not a carbonyl because there's nothing in the NMR. And so these peaks must be uh, something to do with the carbon bonded to the N. And if you have a look, um, the second peak that's close by has just simply been deshielded by that electronegative N as well. Remember, electronegative elements can go over three areas. The eighth one, you can see clearly we've got an alkyl and an alkene, and we don't have any OHs or NHs. So this peak over here does not is not a carbon bonded to a nitrogen because we've got nothing over there. So it might look like it over here in the NMR, but the IR says, no, it's not. And we don't have any carbonyl containing compound because there's nothing in the NMR. And also there's not that strong finger-like peak. But we have lots of peaks over here. Oh, that's, that could be an anomaly. Lots of peaks over here. And so that's due to this. This one matches those bond stretches over there. And there is your uh, molecule. Notice it's terminal because this is quite low down, and this one is substituted with both over there, so it's gone higher up. Now, the ninth example, hopefully you can see the alkyl and the alkene showing up, and there's no OHs, NHs, carbonyls, but we've got lots of um, halogens, so we don't have a peak in the NMR for a carbon bonded to the halogen, because that carbon is actually one of these peaks down here. Okay, it's actually this one over here that's been shifted downfield because of that electronegative chlorine. So um, remember, NMR is to the atom, IR is to the bond. And the last example, if you have a look, we've got this finger-like peak quite high at 1800 with lots of sharp peaks over there. So we know it's acyl chloride. So if you just have a quick look at all the others that are missing, if you thought that could be a carbon carbon double bond you know it's not there because it doesn't match up in the uh, NMR um, we know there's no OHs over here or NHs so this is not a um, carbon bonded to a nitrogen it must be a carbon next to a carbonyl so we can cross out quite a few things because we don't see anything over here we can cross out an amide because this is way too upfield we can cross out aldehydes and ketones and so um, this is perhaps just simply the carbon bonded to that acyl chloride. So hopefully this will give you an idea of how to use IR and NMR to work out the functional uh, groups present and absent. Kia ora.